Holy smokes. You know, if you're used to ordering 3D printers from China that come in little flat pack boxes, this box is huge. But you know, this is the size of box that you need. Oops, to house this much awesome. This is the Flash Forge Adventurer 4. No assembly, just unbox it, plug it in, and you are printing with it. I have, for years, recommended the Flash Forge Adventurer 3. Why? Well, because I don't just grade 3D printers on just one aspect of them. I grade them on three aspects. There's price, there's capability, and there's ease of use. And if that hand motion looks familiar to you, join me for a second in saying, rest in peace, chief. Yeah. The Adventurer 3. Price? Well, okay, it wasn't as cheap as an Ender 3, but it's still a reasonable price. $400 thereabouts. I could still recommend that to somebody who wanted to buy a first-time 3D printer. Capability? Yeah, it was capable. Out of the box, it can print... ABS, PLA, PETG, it was, it was capable and the enclosure on it made it really good to use and ease of use. This was where it shined. Up to that point, I had never used a 3D printer that was easier to use. And even to this date, unless you're talking about the Toybox 3D printer, which you have to live with a web service in order to make that use. Besides that though, I've never used a 3D printer that was easier to use than the Adventurer 3. So it had all three. Maybe not the strongest on any one of them, but strong in each one of them, making it just a powerful triangle of, of a 3D printer score rubric. You get what I'm saying though, right? And the Adventurer 4, I mean, quite frankly, is just Adventurer 3 with the size dialed up and a few new neat features that make it everything an Adventurer 3 is plus more, in including the price. I mean, you, you can't expect to go from this to this and, and get, you know, the same price. It's, it's going to cost more. Now, I have to admit that this is not going to be a review. It can't be a review. It's going to be a lot of comparison to the Adventurer 3, and I guess that's just what happens when you have an Adventurer plus one. But it's also not a review because this unit right here that I have is a beta unit, and it isn't the unit that you guys are going to have. They wanted to send it to me early so that I can evaluate it. So I can't tell you what you're going to get for sure, it's probably going to be very much like this one. However, however, I can say this. So far, I like what I'm seeing. So what does this improve over the Adventurer 3? Well, I mean, just about everything, but the obvious answer is it's bigger. One of the complaints about the Adventurer 3 was that, eh, hey, it's only 15 centimeters cubed, and, and that's you know, smaller than an Ender 3 or Prusa or the common size of 20 centimeters cubed plus a little bit more. Yeah, okay, it's it's a little bit smaller. Well, this isn't. Uh, now, the, the volume of the printer is big, but because it's an enclosed bed slinger, the print volume is actually a little bit smaller than you're seeing here, but it is now in that realm of that standard 3D printer size. In addition to its bigger size, it now has the size inside of it to hold a regular spool. No more mini spools or funky adapters hanging off the sides. Just put regular spools of filament in there. Honestly, that's, that's a big one. Now, this does come with a lot of the iterations and changes that have happened to the Adventurer 3 over the year. For instance, it right out of the box has nine point leveling on the build plate which is good but an adventurer 3 now has that as well it also has wi-fi 3d printing yes nine point leveling got it wi-fi got it but that's hopeful because it means that as future upgrades come out this machine will have them as well it's starting at a good place and it's gonna go better one of the upgrades that they've added is a new high temp nozzle. Now, if you aren't aware, an Adventurer 3 
to have this really cool nozzle system. See, if you've used a 3D printer for any length of time, you know that the biggest problem is the nozzles. The, the nozzles clog and you've got to replace them and you've got to unscrew them and heat it up and pain in the neck. This solves that. All you have to do is just push two little knobs, pop the nozzle out, pop a new nozzle in, you're good to go. This is great. I love these nozzles. And honestly, you don't have to change them that often. I've used a dozen Adventurer 3s over the past couple of years and I've ran through maybe six nozzles on all of them. That's pretty good. They're creating a new nozzle that's for high temp filaments. Now they sent me this one that says it's a high temp nozzle, but they told me not to use it because it's a beta unit and this one probably not good, but I'm going to be getting that. I'm going to be testing it out. I'm looking forward to seeing what it can do. In fact, I can confirm that that nozzle wasn't good because, uh, well, whenever I get a 3D printer, I always do some test prints. And one of the test prints I do is doing one of these funny infinity cubes. And at first I couldn't get the darn thing to work without breaking. I, I broke so many, in fact, every single one of these that I printed uh, just, just broke. Just that's not the way it's supposed to work. That's, that's not what's supposed to happen. That one didn't even stick to the build plate, but you get it, it didn't work. And the problem that I found was that in the slicer, the default is to print at 104% extrusion rate. Yeah, that's a little bit too much. Crank that sucker back down to 100. Actually, I found 98 works pretty good. So once you fix that in the software, all of a sudden things start working. Of course, uh, another test print that I do is to 3D print some Legos and see how they stick together. But these were, yeah, running into that over extrusion problem. Of course, once I fixed that over extrusion problem, they actually, they actually worked with each other, kind of, mostly. Yeah. And they kind of worked with real Legos. You could stick these to real Legos, but real Legos not to these. Now, mind you, that is, you know, just most 3D printers can't, 3D print Legos. So the fact that they got it to the point where the Legos would work with themselves, yeah, absolutely. However, I also print some Lego studs and I've only ever seen one 3D printer that these work on. <sighs> this is not that 3D printer. Then I follow that up with some print -a blocks because print -a blocks are designed to work even with some inaccuracies and yeah, they work just fine. Then I follow it up with a big print. I just take something and I scale it up, whether it's a Chiba Mall, whether it's, well, in this case, I did a low poly dyno. I did a Raptor and the darn thing just kept falling apart. It's like, what's going on? Well, at this point I was using that high temp nozzle that they told me not to use. And I'm like, oh, this is why they told me not to use it. So I switched it out for the other nozzle that they sent with me and yeah, giant raptor printed great clever girl after this i just started using it and because i was in the middle of the printer block beast i used it to print printer block beast and so yes many of the printer block test prints were printed on the adventurer 3 i just couldn't tell people about it because they didn't want me to yet well now i can a lot of the printer block beast especially the ones that were printed in silk pla were printed on the Adventure 3 because this machine can handle all kinds of material. PLA, you bet, but Silk 2. And they sent me some prints to show what else it can do. PETG, you betcha, it can do PETG. Polycarbonate, with the high temp nozzle, it can do that. I look forward to testing that. PETG with carbon fiber in it. Sure, PLA with carbon fiber in it. You bet, uh, just, I think this is just matte PLA, regular PLA. Yeah, I've tested it. It works. So I've tested PLA. I've tested silk. I could test PETG and I probably should. I can say that those work for sure. And I look forward to saying that the other ones do. And knowing FlashForge, they don't lie about these things. They're honest about it. If they say that it'll work, it'll work. I'm looking forward to proving it. Now I'll tell you one thing that I do like. The camera in the Adventure 3 was kind of worthless, honestly. It was there, but it only worked on the local network. So if you were on the local network, you could, you know, ping the IP address for it, get an address and get a live feed of what you were printing. That was cool, I guess, but 
I couldn't check it from work. I couldn't see how my print was doing remotely and stop the print. Even with Polar Cloud, it just, it couldn't give me the camera feed. It was only local. Well, this didn't fix that. Instead, what they did was they gave the camera a function. Now from the menu, you can enable the camera and turn it on to take a time lapse. So yeah, you can record a time lapse. It'll record it to the local memory. And after you're done, you can dump it to your card and check it out. You can watch a time lapse. The only problem is that their internal lights blow out the camera sensor. It doesn't try to do anything fancy. We're not going to be using this to do any Wild Rose Builds videos, but at least they've given the camera a function now. So that's an upgrade from the Adventure 3. You know, I feel like I'm not giving you guys enough reason to be excited about this printer. Not as excited as I am about it, for sure, because I love this printer. I think it's great. I think it's a great addition to the Flash Forge family, and it is as easy to use as the Adventure 3, which is what I love about it. Really, the question is, who is this for? I mean, should every hobbyist out there be having an Adventure 4? Well, I mean, I think it's a great machine for hobbyists, but I think a better audience for it, a, a definite like no-brainer recommendation is if you're working in a makerspace or a school or anywhere that you are going to be having 3D printers that you're going to be making available to the public. If this is going to be somebody's first time using a 3D printer, you want them using a 3D printer that is as easy to use as the Adventure 3 or if you want the increased capability and capacity the Adventurer 4. In fact, looking at the overall specs of this machine, my initial impression of it was this could be an Ultimaker killer. But now that I've used it a little bit, now that I see the slight accuracy problems in the Z, which they could correct, I don't think it's an Ultimaker killer, but it's definitely an Ultimaker alternative. If you want the capability and size and materials of an Ultimaker in a public space so that people can use them, but you don't want to spend as much as an Ultimaker, well, that's what this machine is for. And it's, it's a great alternative, I think, to the Ultimaker in every way. So I guess that's it. If you're looking at an Ultimaker or you're looking at an alternative to an Ultimaker, well, this, I think, is a good alternative to the Ultimaker. I do wish that I could make a solid recommendation for this machine, but like I said, it's a beta unit and there's still some rough edges. So if you're brave enough and in a position to do so and get the Adventure 4, let me know how the commercial version is because I really hope, I, I, I'm absolutely hopeful. And knowing the history of Flash Forge, knowing what they've done in the past, I have every reason to believe that it will deliver on all of its promises. And if it does, this is a good, good machine and excellent option for people, especially in the makerspace and school communities. Yeah, Adventure 4. I like it. I like it a lot. Before we go, check out this cool project on the What You Making channel on my Discord. Why don't you stop by and check out what other cool projects are there. And hey, if you share something you've done, maybe you'll see it in a future video too. Thank you very much for watching. Hey, if I mentioned anything in this video, you'll find a link to it in the cards and you should check that out. Did you know that I'm social? I've got links to all the socials and you should stop by and say hi. I really kind of enjoy it when that happens. Big thanks go out to my direct backers. And if you want to know more about how you can become that, there'll be a link right here that you can check out. And as always, I want to remind you safety first because I care about you and I'll see you next time. Oh, that's interesting. Classic one there. Monstrously big, but that's the size of box that you need.